Hey guys, Buffer Game Bat today, bringing you another video. And today we're going to be covering FSB or Russian Spetsnaz loadouts for Call of Duty Modern Warfare specifically. There's some we could throw in here with Cold War, but today we're going to focus on the Modern Warfare specific Spetsnaz loadouts with operators that we can cover here in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. So here on screen you'll see I have Bale's Protectorate skin, which is modeled after a Spetsnaz SSO operative, part of the Special Operations Forces Command or KSSO. Let's go ahead and we'll jump in and go through the loadouts and then I'll show you some different varieties of Spetsnaz operators and weapons to run with them. So go into our loadouts here. And again, these are mainly for Modern Warfare. You can run these in Warzone. Uh, however, you may want to switch up some attachments to be more, uh, I guess, safer in Warzone with suppressors and things like that. But let's go ahead and take a look. First off, we're going to start with our AK-74M, the M standing for the modernized version of the AK-74. So... Here is our weapon at base. What I'll do is just run through these attachments. First off, unfortunately, you can swap one of these attachments here. We'll talk about it. But the Spetsnaz Elite Barrel gives us that Midwest Industries M-Lock handguard attachment here on the AK-47 here in game. That'll increase our damage at range, bullet velocity. The cons here are going to be the ADS speed for the weapon. But definitely a good attachment for the AK for Modern Warfare multiplayer as well as Warzone itself. Next up, we'll skip on the laser. Go ahead with a combat holographic sight or an EOTech. Now, Russia, they utilize their, their own models of this that are, are look very similar. So in this case, we're just kind of pretending that it is not an EOTech and that it is a Russian variant of the holographic sight. So again, precision sight pitch gives you about a 1.5 to 1.75 times zoom, I believe, on this. The cons being the ADS speed. Next up, we want to get that modernized... AK-12 type buttstock on this or some of the buttstocks that you see third, that are from third party vendors that you can see on the AK-74 M's and N series. What we'll go ahead and do is take a look. We're going to run the FSS close quarter stock. So this is going to get, give us the ADS speed and the aiming stability. The blueprint variant we're using here is a Team Hoda. However, you have different options here. Like this is what came with the steel curtain initially, which made it look pretty modernized. And here we have We'll go with the Tim Hoda. It gives us that AK-12 RPK-16 type buttstock there that goes really well with the AK. Next up, we'll skip down to the ammunition, and we're going to run the 545 by 39 millimeter conversion to this to turn it from an AK-47 into the AK-74, utilizing the 545 magazine and ammo. So pros here are going to be the fire rate and the recoil control. The cons, damage, and the range will be reduced. However, you're switching up the ammo here. Your rate of fire is going to be significantly increased and your damage output actually just because of the the rate of the fire increase you actually deal more damage in those closer quarter close to medium quarter situations now i'm running the duly devoted here so we retain our uh camouflage with the weapon when we utilize these as you can see this is the only other one outside of freedom fighter which doesn't really have full retention of the camouflage it actually looks pretty cool though but duly devoted looks really nice on this weapon you can see some of the other options we have here as well with the collateral kind of having some of it for some reason it doesn't cover the entire magazine so we'll stay with the duly devoted next up for the underworld attachment we're going to want that ranger foregrip so that'll give us the recoil control aiming stability cons you can see there as well but this gives us a nice looking ak-12 or ak-74 type weapon here now one thing you'll notice is that the, the there's no uh muzzle device on this it's just the thread here is just kind of completely empty which is definitely a glitch with the base ak barrel and the spetsnaz barrels you'll notice that if i go and look at the other ones you have the rpk barrel here the 23 inch has a muzzle device on the end the AK-74, AKS-74 MS, excuse me, the AKS-74U has a muzzle device on there, and the Romanian also has the muzzle device. So for some reason, the base AK and the Specialist Elite does not have a muzzle device. So if we were to deselect the stock option there, we go ahead and put on the fat muzzle brake here from the Revolution to give it kind of that, that fat compensator uh, muzzle brake look that we see in a lot of the modern AK designs. So there we have our AK-74M. And I put Desert Camo on there just to kind of go with the uh, with the, the operator itself for the Spetsnaz SSO. But you can see what that would look like if we deselected it. It looks pretty cool. We can also go ahead and put on something like one of these would be really nice. The kill brush always looks really good on this. So if we go ahead and back out, we can take a look 
That is our final design. You can see if I go ahead and look at our operator for Bale with the Spetsnaz SSO skin here. You can see how well that goes. Especially it's modeled after a real life operator being Spetsnaz SSO. And typically they're going to run AK 74Ms or AK 100 series weapons. Maybe 105s, 104s, things like that. So you can see there, really nice looking operator with our Spetsnaz SSO operator skin and our nice ak 74m so let's go ahead and back out and we'll look at the other weapons we have here so i'm not going to go through the pros and cons for any of the other weapons here just for time purposes so I'll, you'll be able, to be able to see them all on screen however now for our pistol here we're running actually uh we're running an apb so we did the aps conversion the other day this is an apb which i'll be covering in a future video for the weapon conversions now if we look at the next one here it's going to be the as val so the AS Val, we're, again, trying to stick more so to realistic type designs for the most part here. So we're going to use the base barrel because there really is no third-party barrel that I'm aware of, similar to the VLK200 OSA. However, you do have SR3 and 3Ms that have similar barrels to the Stovall and the Sova barrel as well. But we're going to run the base AS Val barrel here. We're also going to put on the TAC laser there. Then you can see that nice, uh, it's got a, a cannon mounted rail that is attached to that where you're able to mount that attack laser. You're also going to run the APX 5. This is a Russian holographic sight. It looks really, really sleek on the AS Val. And you get that really nice reticle too. I'll show you here in a minute. And then for the stock option, we're going to run the FSS Intel Gen 4 GRU. So. On commission from FFS International, uh, stock designed to improve target acquisition time for elite forces. So it gives it a really nice modernized look to the to the AS Val, which I like with this particular stock option. We'll skip next and go to the 30 round magazine. So typically, AS Vals in real life have 20 round magazines, but the SR3 introduced this 30 round magazine that you see here. So we'll go ahead and put that on to increase from 20 of the 9x39 to 30 rounds. And then we'll run the Ranger Foregrip just because it looks closest to a Zeneco RK-1, I believe, or an RK-0 uh, foregrip here. It looks pretty nice on there, and it's going to assist us with the recoil control as well. So that is our modernized AS Val, looking really nice. And again, I'm running here the APS pistol with that weapon as well. Next up, we'll skip down the M13, not a Russian weapon, just leaving it in the rotation there. We're going to go with the PKP Pechenang. So for this one... Muzzle we're going to leave blank, and you can see this one actually does have a muzzle device on it, which is nice. We're going to go with the 25.9 inch heavy barrel. So you can see the base barrel with this. We're using a standard issue blueprint, obviously, so we get that nice Zeneco uh, B33 Sport handguard on there, which looks really nice. And if I go ahead and put the 25.9 inch, you can see we have the carrying handle there for the PKP Pechenegg with this weapon. So that's a nice conversion there. We'll go ahead and put that on. We're going to keep with, stay with the VLK three times optic here since it is a Russian optic. It looks really nice. The base stock we'll keep here. We have, an, again, a, a Zeneco stock option here on the standard issue, which looks really nice, versus the base PKMs have the wooden stock, so we'll keep that. Run the rubberized grip tape, again, just to kind of fill a slot here, but it's really, it's really uh, you don't really need this. I think the recoil control on this is actually pretty easy with the Pechenegg barrel as well, but again, that'll help you out a little bit. And then we'll run a 150-round belt, so we're increasing that from the 100-round belt, and then we're going to run that that RP, or I believe it's the RP5, uh, I want to say, or maybe it's an RP2 hand or a grip here so the rp2 hand grip I, for, I forget which designation it is from zeneco but it is a zeneco grip it is cannon mounted there the snatch grip that'll help you with the recoil control and the ads speed believe it or not so you can see it's cannon mounted the snatch grip really nice looking here on the pkp pechenegg then we're going back on the mp7 so the mp7 we're kind of just making this for uh we're making it for turning it into kind of a MP9, or excuse, yeah, an MP9 most we can by BNT. Obviously, it's still an MP7, but you can see they're trying to make it look as close as we can to an MP9, which would be the Russians love to use, especially Spetsnaz, for a CQC weapon as well. So that's our BNT MP9 right there, running with the PKP Pechenegg. Next up for the Ash 12, we'll go ahead and select the Odin here. We're going to run the Odin Factory 420 millimeter barrel since this is in real life a CQC weapon designed for urban combat. So the base barrel, just a little bit too long. We want that shortest barrel option here. 
you can see we'll select that. We'll run the 5 milliwatt laser for hit fire accuracy. Run a standard holographic or an EOTech. Again, we're going to kind of take liberties and pretend that's a Russian EOTech variant there. And it looks really nice mounted on the carry handle there. Next up, we'll run the XTAC or the FTAC XL Elite Comb. That's going to give us the ADS speed increase. And again, it looks pretty sleek on this weapon here on the buttstock. And also, this is a bullpup design, which looks really, really nice with all these attachments. The grip and magazine we'll leave alone. At base, you get 20 rounds here of the 12.7 by 55 millimeters, so we'll leave that. And then we're going to run, again, the really the Ash-12 grip. It looks identical to the real-life Ash-12 grip. It's going to be the Ranger 4 grip there for the recoil control and the aiming stability. So this is our Ash-12, or as it's really designated now, the Shock-12 in real life. Designed for urban close quarters combat by the FSB. So very, very nice weapon. Again, this is a large, large bullet that it fires. It's a, essentially a 50 caliber with a 12.7 by 55 millimeters. So this is meant to put people down quickly in close quarters urban combat. So that's our Ash-12 or our Shock-12. Next up, we'll run the VSS Ventura. So this is a the VSS uh, m Ventura is here essentially because we're running the modernized Strelic stock. So we'll put the Dragunov scope on this, the VLK Strelic stock for the VSSM, or the modernized variant of the VSS. We'll run rubberized grip tape there for a little bit of recoil control. We'll run the SPP rounds, which is the sniper penetration rounds here. Again, nine, it is 9 by 39 millimeter, so we'll go ahead and run that, increase penetration, and it's going to change our weapon to only semi auto. And then for real-life purposes, we're going to run a bipod on this, just for, for aesthetic purposes, to try and stay real to the weapon's purpose in real life. So that is our VSS Venturas, or our VSS M Venturas there, with that nice-looking stock, modernized stock option that comes with the, the modernized variants. If you want to do something else, the original VSS, you want the VLK stock here, and you can see that's a original VSS stock right there. So... That's our VSSM Ventores. We'll go ahead and back out. Next, we'll run the AN94 Avacon, or the Avdamont Nik Nikonov model of 1994. So we're going to put that that standard sonic brake on this. This is what it comes with in real life. You can't equip suppressors to this. This sonic brake is needed uh, on the weapon in real life to allow it to function the way it does. You have the reciprocating barrel. It needs to expel gases. So that sonic brake comes standard issue with the AN94s. Next up, we'll run the TAC laser on this thing, which comes mounted on the right-hand Picatinny rail there, which looks pretty nice, especially that black and tan combo. We'll run the VLK 3 times optic there, the AN94 factory heavy. So this is actually known as kind of the boot stock. This is what came really on the prototype variants of the AN94. However, you do see a lot of uh, some models still utilizing this when you do see them out there at some ranges and things like that in some videos. So I figured I'd go ahead and put that on. It does look really nice on the AN94. It gives it a nice... Nice, uh, unique look, I believe. And then we'll run the Ranger foregrip on there as well for that recoil control and the aim and stability. So this is our AN94 Audemars Nikonov model of 1994. Or the Abacon. Really nice looking design there. We're running the base barrel, however, obviously you could swap out the stock option for a better barrel option if you wanted to there as well. Next up, the SVD, the modernized variant of the SVD, utilizing what I believe, I think I covered this in the Plague Store video, is the Midwest Industries chassis and handguard options here. So we're on the tactical suppressor because this is firing a, a larger caliber, I believe it's 7.62 by 39 millimeter, I believe it fired. Oh, okay, 7.62 by 54 millimeter R is what it fires in real life. Sorry. So the PBS4s obviously will not be compatible with that. Those are designed for AK-74s, 545 by 39 millimeters. So we're going to want the PBS1 suppressor on this, assuming it can even is those are even compatible with the 762 by 54, which I'm not sure if they are. I believe uh, I believe they are. There's different variants of the PBS suppressors that are. But again, this is really modeled after a PBS1, so we'll go ahead and put that on there. We'll run the longest barrel option there for the damage at range, bullet velocity, and the recoil control the TAC laser, then you want that FTAC Hunter stock to give it that, again, staying with the modernized design. If I were to deselect that, you can see you still get a wooden stock, but at least it's dark looking, so it doesn't take too much away from the design, but we'll run that FTAC stock. Another option is the the Stalker Scout, which also looks good on this. So we'll put the FTAC Hunter on there for that aiming stability, and then the bipod again, because it is a sniper rifle in real life. So that is our SVD. One thing to note here, 
We do have the top rail is a Picatinny mounted dust cover along the full length of the, the top of the handguard there. We also have the RP1 charging handle there, which is very interesting. We don't see this on any of the other Russian weapons, really. We actually see it on almost all the Russian weapons but the AK. The AK never got that charging handle or the top mounted Picatinny rails, which is quite a shame. But you have this really nice handguard there from Midwest Industries here on the SVD or the Dragonov. So we'll go ahead and back out. That is our SVD. Now we'll run for another sniper rifle. We're, again, modeling this after the T5000, which is a Russian sniper rifle designed to fire in 300 Winchester, 338 Lapua, or 308 Norma Mag. So we're going to run the muzzle brake on this, the SPR 26-inch barrel. It'll be the longest barrel option available for this. Give us increased bullet velocity and recoil control. We also have the variable zoom optic here to give us a, a bigger, uh, fatter-looking looking sniper scope there you can also run this the base one here also if you wanted to you can see it actually looks a little bit bigger so we can put that one on and then the key attachment here is the stock option so we're going to go with the xrk sp sp tac 208 this gives us that in complete chassis redesign here to turn it more so it looks similar to uh, a modernized m24 as well as the T5000. So you can see there, ADS speed and aiming stability are your pros with your con and recoil control, but it changes the whole chassis of the weapon, which looks really, really nice here with this weapon. It looks similar, like I said, a modernized M24, as well as the T5000. looks pretty similar. So the next up, the ammunition, we'll go ahead and run the 338 Lapua Magnum. It's capable in real life, the T5000, of taking all three of these, either 300 Winchester, 300 Norma, or 338 Lapua. So we'll put the Lapua rounds on there. Those are the best rounds that I believe you can get, you get the increased damage as well on this, so it looks pretty nice. And that is our T5000. Obviously for a lot of these, if you wanna use them in Warzone, you're probably gonna want a suppressor on there, but there it is right there, our, our Orsus T5000. Russian sniper rifle, next up. Last but not least, you can see also, I'm running a modernized VSS here again, VSS M again, similar to what we covered the sniper variant, except this one, utilizing the 30 round mags uh, for more CQC. In real life, the VSS and the ASVAL are very, very similar. The only difference being the stock option, essentially. So the VSS is also capable of going full auto. Just obviously, it will typically utilize SP6 or something like that for armor piercing rounds or the SPP, like you see. But this perfectly acceptable for a ASM VAL or a VSSM. Last but not least, we're going to run for the SKS. So this is our modernized SKS. Again, we're gonna run a monolithic suppressor, the 22 inch barrel on this. We're gonna run the variable zoom and then the FTAC Hunter Scout to give us that modernized look. And I, I can't remember off the top of my head what this chassis is in real life. I wanna say um, it's some US company, I believe. But again, it gives it a nice modernized look and design to it over the base, which you're, obviously you can run the, the base one too. However, the FTAC Hunter Scout, again, changes the whole chassis of the weapon and makes it look much more modernized, which I really, really like that with the SKS. So we'll, we'll go ahead and keep that. And then you run the Ranger foregrip there for, again, the R, an RP charging handle as well. Looks really nice. So there is our SKS. And then our secondary for this, we're running an AKS-74U. So we have the 8.1-inch compact barrel on this. And I'm utilizing the duly devoted blueprint one to give, give us an all black build and you can see it's got some some designs in there that make it look a little bit more modernized of the handguard on there that's going to assist with the ADS speed and the movement speed then we have again our EOTech or our Russian Russian modernized uh holographic site we're again going to run that Tim Hoda buttstock there to give it a modernized stock option similar to the RPK-16 and the AK-12 we're going to run the 545 magazine Again, for the Duly Devoted, you can obviously pick from some of these, but Duly Devoted looks nice and clean. And then we'll go ahead and do the Ranger Foregrip there as well for the recoil control and the aim and stability. And that's our, our AKS M74U. So our modernized variant of the AKS 74U looks really, really sleek and actually a lot of fun to use in, in game. I've used it in both multiplayer and Warzone, and it's, it's actually a lot of fun to use. Especially in those close quarter situations, which is where the 5.5 by 39 millimeter rounds really do excel. So, really quick, jump it out. Take a look at our options here for operators. So, we'll go ahead. We already looked at the SSO operator. Let's go ahead and cover. We can go ahead and do something like 
if I were to just put this to all black, actually, we can cover the sober unit. So we'll go ahead and do all black for this one. And then what we'll do is go to our operators. We'll go to, to our coalition. And then here for the Russian forces, the base operator, we have the, the FSB operator selected or what it is modeled after in real life is a sober unit, which is essentially domestic uh, terrorist unit, special police force, similar to the SWAT team, essentially. Um, but they, they train like military and they operate similar to the military. So very elite force. This is our sober unit with, again, an AKS-74, or excuse me, the AK-74M here. And again, modeled very closely to what the, some of the real life designs look here for the sober units. They look really, really good. I covered a lot of these in a video before, so I'll try and link those down below for the sober unit specifically um, in the description here. So that is our Russian sober unit. Next up, let's go ahead and switch it up just a little bit and we'll go select some of the other weapons here. We'll go with a PKP Pechenegg. Go ahead and set that to favorite. And then we'll go ahead and do another, another type of FSB alpha group operator here would be the darkness bale. So this is again, another design for a, a different branch of the Spetsnaz alpha group. And here we'll run the PKP Pechenegg, which looks really, really nice here with that design overall. Especially with that PKP Pechenegg. So next up, I think that's really all of the Spetsnaz operators that that are really available in the game that look really good. Another option here would be if we go ahead and run the, uh, we can run the Val, take a look at what the Val looks like with some of these Russian operators. If we go ahead back to, back to Bale, and you can see there with the Protectorate, with the ASM Val, we have the Darkness skin, as well as Spetsnaz Bale also looks pretty cool as well. And one more, just because I really enjoy looking at it, would be the Ash 12 or the Shock 12. But we set that to favorite and go back to our operators for Bale again. We'll go ahead and look at him here. There you can see, with the Ash 12, just an awesome looking weapon with the Spetsnaz operators, especially with this Spetsnaz SSO operator here. And then we look at with Darkness. And then Spetsnaz Bale as well. And another one that would be pretty cool would be the, uh, you can see some of these ones here, the Blackjack and the Salvo always looks really cool too. And then you also have the Stoneface Operator skin, which I got, I believe this is season one, heavily armored version of, of Bale here. looks really, really nice. And then if we can also look at him where the FSB Sober unit here, if I go ahead and look at that with the S12, really nice looking design there for CQC. Close quarters engagers would be pretty, uh, I don't think the Soviet units utilize a Shock 12 in real life, but it would really fit their uh, their purposes and needs for sure. Um, really, really nice. Because they operate in CQC engagements, urban combat. So they usually utilize AK, AK-74s, AK, different types of AKs, 105s, things like that, 104s. Uh, B and T MP9s, but this would be right up the rally. I'm not sure if they use it, but that is our FSB loadouts here for Modern Warfare. I know it was a long video, guys. Big shout out to Big Mike for the thumbnail for this video. I'll link his information down below. Shout out to Big Mike. Thank you for the awesome thumbnail, buddy. I appreciate it. And that is our FSB operators and loadouts for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019. Let me know down below what you guys think in the comments. What are your favorite designs? I know you can definitely make some different versions here that I didn't cover. However, we got through quite a bit. So let me know down below what you guys think. Till next time, Buffer Gaming, out.